Hello everyone and a Merry Christmas everyone. Uh, we have a very nice game today uh, from the Astana tournament of 2001. It was a tournament that was uh, sort of a celebration of the 10 year independence of Kazakhstan uh, of the, from the uh, Soviet Union. And uh, this is a game from the final round of the tournament. So it's Kasparov with the white pieces, uh, Vladimir Kramnik, uh, current world champion, Vladimir Kramnik with the black pieces, and Kramnik is leading the tournament. So Kasparov needs a win here with the white pieces uh, to actually uh, win the tournament. Uh, Kasparov and Kramnik in 2001, at the time this game was played, were the only two players rated over 2,800. And, um, uh, well, this was, uh, of course, somewhat after their uh, famous World Chess Championship match. And it's uh, interesting that... Um, uh, Kasparov mentions this uh, all the time and the, the reason why I'm showing you this game is I watched uh, the, the, the podcast on the C Squared uh, podcast uh, with um, uh, Fabiano Coran and Christian Cirilla. Uh, they had uh, Kasparov as a guest and then uh, he, he mentioned this game briefly and I, uh, you know, I thought about it and I was like, I've, I've never covered this game and it's a, really a shame. But probably because I haven't covered their match, I'm also attempting to do not attempting i'm also uh, at some point um, preparing to do that uh, but uh, yeah this game is very interesting because in the actual match uh, kasparov couldn't really get any play with the white pieces uh, the, the match won by uh, the, the match ended by kasparov not winning a single game uh, kramnik of course became world champion and uh, the uh, the the well infamous or the famous Berlin defense was employed by Vladimir Kramnik uh, four times. Uh, interestingly, five times uh, Rue Lopez was on the board, but uh, out of one of those five times, uh, Kramnik actually went for the Morphe's defense. He didn't go for the Berlin defense. I don't know why. Maybe he just had a hunch that uh, uh, Kasparov had something ready after the first three games, but then he returned to the Berlin defense in the fifth game. And again, Kasparov couldn't really uh, get any sort of a game. So this is why this game is so famous, not just because uh, uh, of the situation of the tournament. Uh, it, like I said, it's a final round. Uh, Kramnik needs uh, uh, only only a draw to, to secure the tournament, uh, but also because once again, uh, Kasparov will test Kramnik's Berlin defense. So uh, without further ado, let's check it out. Kasparov has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to e4. Uh, we have pawn to e5 by Kramnik, knight to f3, we have knight to c6, and now bishop to b5. The Royal Lopez is on the board, uh, and here comes knight to f6, the uh, Berlin defense. We have castles, uh, and just knight captures on e, uh, on e4, the Rio Gambit accepted. It's, uh, again, uh, very, very standard stuff. d4, knight to d6, and now bishop captures on c6, much like you would see in a, in a modern game. d captures, d captures on e5, uh, knight to f5, and now queens get traded off the board. We have captures, captures, and knight to c3. So again, uh, exactly the same as you would see it played nowadays. We we have pawn to h6 and pawn to h3, bishop to d7, uh, and pawn to b3 now, preparing to fianca to the uh, the dark square bishop, uh, and now king to e8. This is sort of a, a difference between today's games. Nowadays, uh, we know from our good friend the engines that king to c8 is uh, the, the preferred move, but king to e8 is still fine. You can play it, but maybe white gets uh, a bit more out of the game. We have bishop to b2 by Kasparov, uh, rook to d8, and now rook a to d1. And here comes knight to e7. And now if you look at uh, Kasparov's um, pieces, let's say the rooks on d1 and on e1, the knight on f3, and c3 the bishop already assuming this diagonal uh it does seem like white is playing uh, principal chess whereas black still has a king in the center uh, everything is you know piled up here uh, you know it's very hard to say how this rook is ever going to enter the game probably the idea is to trade as much as possible and then at some point you know move the king and get the rook into the game maybe on move 65 i don't know uh, but okay knight to g6 uh, kramnik has to figure out how to complete development and now knight to e4 and here already a very interesting move uh, nowadays uh, bishop to c8 is known uh, to be the, the the move here and then of course you just like i said try and get this rook into the game somehow uh, but here knight to f4 was played by uh, uh, by vladimir and now kasparov's position is actually already completely winning uh, as of move 15 so it's a very interesting uh, setup feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolute best move for uh, for uh, gari uh, while i give you a couple of seconds
So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, always favoring activity over material. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is pawn to e6. That's the move. And it looks like a crazy move to tr even try because the e6 square is guarded three times by black's pieces. But the problem is, uh, however you recapture isn't really working. If you play bishop captures an e6, and then comes knight to f6 with check. And now look at this. G captures, bishop captures an f6, uh, threatening checkmate with rook captures and so of course you will trade once uh, but once white recaptures again mate is being threatened so you have to figure out uh, a way of stopping that let's say bishop d5 and then of course white grabs the rook on h8 and white is just up material uh, both players have six pawns but white is up the exchange so that's the problem with bishop captures on e6 if you play f captures on e6 okay you will not get checkmated, but here comes bishop to e5 with an attack on c7 and the knight on f4. Uh, also one of the reasons why knight to f4 does not belong here in this particular line. Knight to g6, let's say bishop captures on c7, rook to c8, and now bishop to d6. And it's just a much better position for white. Uh, and by much better, I mean winning. Uh, let's say you, you, you try to bring the rook back. Already you just trade here. Captures, captures, and now knight to d6 with checking e7. You capture on b7. Also you can see that it's good that white already has a pawn on b3 so you can just move the knight you don't have to worry about losing the b2 pawn let's say knight to c5 and now if let's say rook f to d8 defending the bishop here uh, you can already end the game rook captures on d7 removing the defender of the e6 pawn rook captures and now rook captures on e6 with the rook hanging with the knight hanging this is resigns for black so uh, after e6 you can't really capture with the bishop you can't capture with the pawn only thing left uh, will capture with the knight so knight captures on e6 uh, and here Kasparov played knight to d4 again uh, bishop to e5 like in the line that we just discussed uh, does appear to be more potent but uh, it's uh, uh, well it's it's a very tricky position and also uh, shows that Kasparov didn't really have this prepared at uh, at home he found, found everything over the board uh, he played knight to d4 and this allows for a, uh, for a sneaky defense with rook to g8 and rook to h7 it's crucial to get the rook off of the h8 square uh, but Kramnik goes pawn to c5 instead he challenges the knight but now the knight comes to f5 and here you have huge problems how do you how do you tackle this well Kramnik did play rook to h7 uh, now uh, and he probably thought that uh, he didn't have to play a move prior to this he, he can play pawn to c5 and then only as a reaction to knight to f5 play rook to h7 but it doesn't work for for one key move that uh, Kasparov has here uh, feel free to pause the video and uh, again play the absolute best move while I give you a couple of seconds it's Christmas so you know we could we could throw in a few more pause the video uh, moments So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, wild idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is bishop to f6. Look at this. We can even do it in slow motion. Bishop to f6. And now you're wondering, what is this madness? Well, uh, if g captures on f6, knight captures on f6 is checkmate. The knight on f5 covers the e7 square. And that's uh, only one of the issues of having your king on e8 on move 19 with, uh, well, five of Kasparov's pieces uh, in front of that king. So here coming just moved the rook rook to c8 and now uh okay the most precise would be pawn to f4 but kasparov goes for a practical choice he plays bishop captures on g7 bishop captures we have knight captures on g7 and now rook captures on g7 knight to f6 with check nicely connecting with the bishop on d7 king to e7 and now knight captures on d7 but it doesn't seem like it's that uh clean uh Kamling just plays rook to d8 attacks the knight knight to e5 and he trades off a pair of rooks captures captures and just goes knight back to f4 the, the move that almost uh cost him uh the game very early on he now repeats it and uh well what uh what do you do here uh it's a very again a very tricky position kasparov plays king to h1 beautiful move it seems like you could capture on g2 but you really can't because if you capture with the knight then just rook g1 you blunder the knight and if you capture with the rook it's not much better if rook uh, captures here then knight to d3 again attacks the knight defends the f2 pawn you cannot move the, the the rook otherwise you lose the knight you cannot move the rook to defend the knight the pawn covers the the g4 square so uh the, the pawn uh, is actually uh, uh poisoned 
Uh, we have rook to g5 going after the knight, and now Kasparov goes knight to g4. Uh, rook to d5, offering a rook trade, and now rook to e1 with check. King back to f8, and now knight captures on h6. So, okay, uh, Kasparov wins a pawn, but uh, is, it is it really enough? Well, it is if uh, Kramnik allows uh, himself to sort of uh, make one more imprecise move. And that is after rook to d2, Kasparov played rook to e5. And the position can still, uh, you know, uh, be defended, but uh, you have to, you, you have to, uh, you know, d decide correctly here. Uh, which pawn do you capture? Do you capture the f2 pawn or the c2 pawn? It seems like a silly question, but it might not be as silly as you think. So for the last and third time, feel free to pause the video and tell me which pawn you grab here. And yes, you, you do have to grab a pawn. Uh, so, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on being the uh, the proper pawn grabber. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is rook captures on c2. That's the pawn you have to capture. And the reason for that is, I will show you. Uh, Kasparov's move is, of course, rook to f5 with a double attack on the knight and on the f7 pawn. So now, after rook to f5 is played, now you capture the f2 pawn with the knight being defended. And now, if rook captures an f7, uh, you will simply move king to e8, and now it's uh, it's a game. You can play, let's say, pawn to h4, pawn to b5, pawn to g4, uh, pawn to a5. White is pushing on the king side, black is pushing on the queen side. Pawn to g5, let's say rook to f1 check, king h2, rook f3. Uh, keeping the, the white king at bay. Uh, and now, finally, if rook captures on c7, you will play rook captures on, uh, rook to h3 check and capture on h4. Let's say king to g1, rook captures on h4, rook captures on c5. And now everything just gets traded off. Knight to h3 with check. And after king to g2, you will capture here. Knight captures, rook captures, rook captures. And it's equal material. This is a, a dead draw, with, of course, with play still being only on the queen side. Uh, so the move is rook captures on c2. However, Kramnik played rook captures on f2 first and now it's completely different rook to f5 was played and now you can't just continue grabbing rook captures or rook captures the knight here would be hanging so it's a huge difference uh but uh, it doesn't seem like something uh, kramnik would win so let's see what happened here he played king to g7 he attacked kasparov's knight uh what do you play here uh not of course knight captures on f7 because then there's the sneaky knight captures on h3 uh offering a trade with the knight defending the rook on f2 so here kasparov brings the knight back knight to g4 attacks the rook here uh and now the problem is uh you cannot keep defending the knight this is what kramnik missed if rook to f1 with check king h2 uh, what do you play? Whatever you play doesn't really matter, like pawn to b5, g3, and that's it, you you lose material. So instead, rook captures on g2 was played, Kramnik will grab the two pawns uh, for, for the for the piece, uh, rook captures on f4, rook captures on c2, and now rook uh, to f2, offering a rook trade and defending the pawn on a2, rook to c3, but now just king to g2. Yes, Kramnik does have two pawns, but a knight is a knight. Uh, you know, uh, so, someone said a fisher is a fisher is fisher, but a knight is a knight. Uh, pawn to b5 with pawn to h4, pawn to c4. Now Kramnik will create a pass pawn here, and of course still try to uh, to play this. Pawn to h5 with c captures on b3, a captures, and now rook to c5, going after the h pawn. If you can eliminate the h pawn, then you are you are getting closer to a draw. But of course, pawn to h6 with check. King to f8, and now knight to f6. We have rook to g5 with check, and here Kasparov just played king to h1, and he was in this position on move 41 that Vladimir Kramnik resigned the game, or rather world champion Vladimir Kramnik resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. So Kasparov finally breaks through the uh, Berlin def uh, defense. He, he shatters the Berlin wall, something that he could not do uh, over the course of four games during their 2000 World Chess Championship match. Uh, he does it now. He gets his revenge in the final round and wins the tournament. And I think uh, uh, going into this tournament, Kasparov was like um, maybe even on a, on a nine uh, tournament winning streak. Like he won nine tournaments in a row. Or maybe this was his ninth tournament uh, win in a row. But still, I mean, a a absolute madness. Uh, and yeah, he takes down uh, world champion Vladimir Kramnik and uh, gets uh, sole first place uh, in this um, uh, uh, Astana tournament of 2001. Uh, so yeah, uh, great stuff here. And the reason why you resign, of course, is... Uh 
well, the, the king cannot uh, uh, get near that h pawn. And if you try something like rook g3, you want to go after the pawn. Uh, look at how elegant this is. Pawn to h7. Let's say rook h3 check. You're going to block rook h2 and die after captures, captures. King g7 stops the queening of the pawn. But now look at this. Pawn to b4. The move that always wins also wins here. You stop a5, you stop c5. Uh, you, you, king captures on f6 is impossible due to h8 uh, queen. And for those of you who really love it when I finish the games, and I will as it's Christmas, uh, let's say a5 captures and now b4. You start pushing for the queen and both players get a queen into the game. Uh, a8 queen, let's say b1 queen, but now the h8 square is defended. So you'll just bring a queen into the game and you can finish this however you want. Your, you know, your your uncle could easily win this with white. Queen to h5 with check. You're going to capture here. Uh, queen to d8 with check. And after king to g7, uh, let's say just, uh, you know, queen d to h8 will deliver checkmate. So, of course, uh, Kravnik did not allow any of this to happen on the board. He realized what is going on and, uh, well. He, he he played it, uh, I believe, up until time control as he, the resignation was made on move 41. But after that, it really, uh, you know, there was no point in continuing the game. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it very nicely. Uh, very nicely done by Kasparov, finally taking down the, the Berlin defense. Uh, I mean, after uh, Kramnik took down Kasparov in their 2000 World Chess Championship match... Uh, uh, the the Berlin defense really got uh, uh, really got popular, and you know everyone has been playing it ever since. Even today, it's extremely popular. Uh, but Kasparov showed that uh, you know it's not it's not bulletproof. If you if you know uh, f find a tactical idea like that pawn to e6 move, it was re really an outstanding uh, resource. Uh, so yeah, once again, really hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Yun Yang, uh, Jack Schroeder, uh, Sergio Dia, Isaac Davis, and Timothy Rozon for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and uh, once again, uh, Merry Christmas everyone.